Uh, our next speaker is Doris Peltier, and Doris is a uh, publicly disclosed 57-year-old uh, Aboriginal HIV-positive woman from uh, Wikwimikong First Nations in Canada. Doris works as the Aboriginal Women and Leadership Coordinator with the Canadian Aboriginal AIDS Network, uh, and is also one of the two APHA liaisons at uh, CAAN. Uh, of note also, uh, Doris has coordinated the development of, a, of the Khan five-year population-specific HIV and AIDS strategy that involved a consultation process with over 300 uh, women in 11 cities across Canada. Please welcome Doris Peltier. Hello, Annie, bonjour, Wajie, Tansi. I'm trying to find my presentation here. <laughs> okay, I'm very happy to be here today to Miigwech for uh, inviting me. Uh, Miigwech to the organizers for uh, inviting me to speak today. Uh, and I do also want, as an indigenous uh, woman from Turtle Island, which is North America, I want to acknowledge the traditional uh, owners of this uh, territory that we're, we're holding this conference at as well, as a traditional person. As an indigenous person, it's very important that we do that. And I want to acknowledge the elders past and present, and, and thank you for allowing us to be here to speak about this very important issue. And I'm also going to be speaking about uh, a trajectory to you, um, the, a trajectory that, that led my brothers and sisters you know, on Turtle Island. And in this instance, I'm going to be sp speaking about Canada. Um, I'm going to be talking about the trajectory that led to the high prevalence rates uh, with our people in Canada, with my brothers and sisters. I just want to start with this slide here. Uh, the, the, this is uh, an indigenous word here. That's, it's in my dialect. And this is uh, really a, a word uh, that speaks to who we are. Uh, it, and the word is And uh, it means the essence of who we are is beautiful. And I was asked to speak about what are the indicators which reflect that Indigenous people in Canada are considered a key population. And that's a pretty hefty uh, question right there. So um, I had to really consider um, what I would need to focus on in terms of um, really uh, emphasizing what, what has led to the high prevalence rates and the high rates that we are now experiencing in Canada, particularly for our Indigenous people. And I also must say that they are a key population. Even though we live in a uh, high resource uh, country. So, when I was thinking about my presentation and uh, I thought, well, what is it that, that creates that trajectory to HIV and AIDS? And so I'm going to focus on colonization. So I just want to walk you through a little bit. Uh, it's a bit of a history lesson, but at the same time, it's uh, something that uh, we, we, we do speak about and we do refer, refer to our history, particularly around uh, historical trauma and, and, and its impacts uh, from colonization. And um, it's important to really speak about that because when uh, contact happened, uh, it, everything changed for, for indigenous people uh, on Turtle Island. And, um, and with the colonization, of course, uh, there were new epidemics that were introduced to our people and uh, it caused a lot of, uh, you know, disorganization for our societies and a disarray. And it had an impact on our traditional social structures and alliances and our kinship. 
Our kinship ties were disrupted. Kinship is very important to us as Indigenous people and because it's our connection to our family and to our communities, uh, and that was disrupted. And uh, our, the confidence in our traditional leadership and healers was also undermined. And uh, so this next slide here is about the dis-ease factor. And, uh, those left in the aftermath of war and disease uh, began to lose hope, and social disintegration followed shortly after as well within all these areas that I'm, I'm mentioning. And the disease factor uh, is really, it's, it, it's, it's different. Uh, you know, it differentiates the history of colonization in the Americas from other regions. But um, I, I actually am kind of disagreeing with that right now as I meet more and more indigenous people across the, uh, uh, at the global level. Uh, there are a lot of commonalities in terms of uh, the impacts of colonization on our, on, our, on our nations and our peoples. And in Canada, this is the most visible colonial legacy. And in this picture, you're seeing a residential school these were the schools where uh, children were, after being ripped away from their family. You know, I mentioned earlier about kinships were, um, were broken, and this is, this is the result. Where the children were sent to these institutes that were um, run by government in partnership with uh, a number of churches. And the whole process, it was an assimilation process. And uh, it, it basically, the mantra, the assimilation mantra was kill the Indian, save the man. And that was, you know, in relation to the, the church's role in all of this. And what went on in there was, uh, had huge impacts to today. We're feeling those uh, ripple effects from what happened at that time. Uh, over the course of uh, quite a few years, and the last residential school closed uh, not too long ago. And qu very quickly, here's a picture of uh, a, a young boy that was, uh, uh, that's how he looked like when he first entered residential school. And once uh, you could see the transformation, that's the same boy. And how did it impact our people? Um, I had to uh, try and understand um, more about historical trauma. And uh, so there are several stages of historical trauma. First of all, there was the physical, the introduction of infectious diseases that de decimated our populations. And then economic uh, violation of uh, our uh, native stewardship and forced, the forced removal of our people from from our natural habitat, from our lands and our way of life. And, uh, and then there was the cultural part, and it was really uh, the, the Christian missionization to bring about this religious transformation. And then at the social level, it was uh, really about the Aboriginal displacement through uh, colonial settlement, uh, the loss of our lands and uh, pe uh, you know, the settlers settling on our lands. And the, the last stage was the psychological uh, uh, trauma. And the effect that it had was the marginalization, the marginalization of our people and uh, social selves becoming very diminished and impoverished. So the disease trajectory for me to HIV and AIDS as a woman living with HIV began at, at, at a very early age. And, um, um, I think for a long time my, uh, my spirit had shut down because of the trauma. And this was not something that's unique to my story. It, it, was, uh, it was something that was experienced by many people. And right now in Canada, the rates, uh, are really having, the rates of HIV are having a huge impact on our people. And some of the key populations, uh, you know, um, within, within uh, the populations are our women, our youth, our uh, two-spirited people, 
we're all key populations. And um, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. In one region, I just want to close with this. In one region, uh, right now, uh, that region is experiencing the highest rates in, in Canada, and it's right in central Canada. And the, the people that are being diagnosed with HIV at that time in that region are anywhere from uh, you know nine months knowing that they're HIV positive to three four years knowing that they're HIV positive. And right now in Canada, uh, the mandate uh, is being broadened by our our fund our funders, and uh, so HIV is going to be is also going to be placed alongside other blood-borne path pathogens. And I really believe that some people are going to get left behind a lot of, uh, and, uh, and that's, that's very serious, you know, particularly with these uh, people in central Canada, with my brothers and sisters there. Um, you know, they're very new to um, ex living with HIV. I haven't been living with HIV for very long, 14 years. When I stand beside somebody that's been living with it for 25 years, I, um, you know, I, I look upon them as warriors. And I had more slides, but uh, my time has run out, but uh, I'm available here to answer any other questions. Uh, miigwech.